Hi friends, today we're talking about EC2. But before we dive in and create an instance here in the console, I've got a quick story for you. This is Sophia. She works at a startup that's creating a website and a mobile app to show locations of air pumps for tires, like this one. Her boss, Alex, who wears sunglasses indoors, came up with this idea after he had a low tire on his car one day and had to drive all over town looking for a gas station that had an air pump. Because they're a startup, they're on a shoestring budget. Sophia's uncle had an old Windows server in his garage, so he donated that to the cause. It sits at the back of their co-working space, and that's what they're currently using to host things. One day, somebody on Reddit mentions their humble little site, and it starts to get more traffic. The server gets totally overloaded and promptly crashes. Sophia tells Alex the news, and he starts stressing about how they're going to buy new servers to manage the increased website traffic. Sophia has worked with AWS a little bit and suggests that they consider switching to the cloud. She tells them that rather than hosting their application on a single server in their office, they can use a server that sits in AWS instead, and this is called an EC2 instance. EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud, this is essentially a virtual server that you rent in AWS. Rent meaning that you only use it when you need it, and you only pay for what you use. And in AWS speak, these are called instances. There are lots of benefits to this. First, they're easy to scale, meaning if you suddenly need 10 extra servers to handle that increased traffic, it's easy to spin those up. And that can even happen automatically with a feature called auto scaling. EC2 is reliable. Amazon has billions of dollars of infrastructure around the world, and so if one of your servers goes down for whatever reason, it can be automatically replaced with another one. EC2 is one of the foundational AWS services, and as such, it works seamlessly with the other AWS services like networking, storage, security, and so on. And as mentioned a minute ago, you only pay for what you use. So rather than guessing how many servers you need, buying them, shipping them to your office, setting them up, maintaining them, and so on, all of that has a lot of upfront cost. You just use instance when you need it, and you only pay for that use. Okay, with that brief background about what and why, let's go set up an instance in the AWS console. Here in the console, I'll navigate to EC2, and the big orange button to launch instance. We'll give it a name. I'll say my demo server. And then we need to select the Amazon Machine Image, or AMI. The AMI is basically a template that says, here's the operating system and the pre-installed applications that I want on the machine. There are lots of AMIs provided by AWS. You'll see the different operating systems here. And then below, for each operating system, there's a lot of options as well. And then you can even browse for more from AWS, the marketplace, and the community. So no shortage of options here. For our story of Sophia and Alex, we were working with Windows, so I'll select that as my operating system. And then scrolling down here, we've got several options for the version of the operating system. I'm just going to go with this top one here, the Server 2022 base, but you'll see there's others. This one is also available for the free tier, which means it won't cost you anything if you're inside of the free tier, which is typically your first 12 months that you have an account. So I'll select that one. And then based on what you select up there, you'll get different options here for the instance type. And this has things like your CPU, your memory, and so on, and you'll see the different pricing. And once again, lots of different options here. Just scrolling down, you'll see how small that scroll bar is. Lots of different things that you can choose from. I'm going to go with this free tier eligible one, which is the T2 Micro family. And you'll see that I get one virtual CPU, a gig of memory, and the pricing for this if I weren't in the free tier. And if you ever want to find out more about the instance types, because there are so many, just click on the info link here. And then on the learn more, this will take you out to the documentation. And you'll see the kind of broad categories of instance types. Some are for general purpose, some are optimized for compute or memory, storage, and so on. So this is a good reference page for you. Okay, but we're going to go with the T2 Micro, which is free for us, and then scroll down to configure additional items here. If you want to connect to your instance, you're going to need a key pair. And if this is the first time you're creating an EC2 instance, you're not going to have one. I have some that I created earlier, but let's go ahead and create a new one. It's free and easy to do. Just enter the name, 
I'll call mine my TTT key pair. And depending on whether you're creating this for a Windows machine or Linux or another OS, your experience might be a little bit different here. This one for Windows, though, I will create the key pair, and then we do need to download and store it somewhere. So I'll just drop this onto my hard drive. And then when we log into the instance later, we'll need to grab that. All right, scrolling down to the network settings, there's a lot going on here. For the most part, when you're just getting started and trying things out, you can go with the defaults here. Just to call out things specifically for our Windows machine, we are going to use the remote desktop protocol, or RDP, to connect to this. So that's automatically enabled for us, which looks good. If you wanted to allow HTTP traffic from the internet, for example, you would select this. And that will set up a security group behind the scenes, which is basically your firewall rules those control traffic into and out of your instance. If you want to edit anything here, you'll just click on the Edit button, and then you get a lot more control over things like your virtual private cloud, which is basically your network that this is running in, options around your IPs, and so on. You can set up additional security rules. So here is that RDP security rule. This is a TCP protocol on port 3389. This was the one to allow traffic from the internet. You can add additional rules as well but we're going to go with just those basics for this demo. And then scrolling down, here's where we configure storage. This is basically your hard drive. And in AWS, this is called the Elastic Block Store, or EBS. They're basically virtual volumes or drives that get attached to your machine. By default, we're getting 30 gigs of a general purpose drive, the GP2 in this case, but you can select other options here as well. And you can also add additional volumes too. But we're just going to go with all the defaults here. And then scrolling down under advanced details, there is a lot here that will probably overwhelm you when you get started. So I'm mostly going to skip this, but here's where you'll find things like whether you want to join this to a domain, options around what happens when you shut down a machine or you hibernate it and so on, things around purchasing, there are ways that you can make reservations for machines or use spot instances where you bid on excess capacity. So lots and lots of things here under the advanced options. But we're just going to stick with what we had prior to the advanced options. And then over here, the number of instances. So you can create more than one instance at a time using this setup. So let's say you dialed everything in on the left, you like that, and you want to create 10 instances with those settings. You can do that. We are just going to create the one here, though, and launch the instance. And success. We've got the launch log of everything that happened here. You see it was creating the security groups, those rules. And if we just click on this link, that'll take us directly to the EC2 part of the console. And here's my demo server. So if we just click on this, That'll bring up the details pane down here, where you can get to a whole variety of things. But one important thing to call out is even though instance state is running right here, we are in an initializing state under the status check. So you're not going to be able to connect to this until this is green, which will take a little while. You can refresh just to see how things are going. We're still initializing. So I'll give it just a minute and then come back when it's ready. Okay, our status check is now green, two of two checks passed, so we should be able to connect to this server now. I'll click on the connect button up here. And this screen will look different depending on what type of instance you created. This was for a Windows server, but if you had created a Linux machine, for example, you're going to have different options up here to actually connect to it. So just FYI here. For Windows, though, we can use the remote desktop protocol, the RDP client. And we can download that file. It's basically a shortcut that we just will click on and log in. So let me download this. I'll just save it to my hard drive. And then double click to open up the RDP client. This will automatically fill in the address to the computer. It should know that we're logging in as the administrator down here. So let me connect. It's asking for the password, which we'll get down here. So get password. And this is where that key pair comes in that we saved earlier. So let me upload that. This is the .pem file. Open that up. That'll paste the key contents down here. And then we'll say decrypt password. 
that will give us the password here. So we'll copy that and then back here, paste in that password and say OK. You'll likely get this message about a certificate error for what we're doing. We'll say that's OK. Click on Yes. And then we've got this RDP full screen view here connecting to the server. It's booting up, so you might not see anything for a minute. OK, we've got the taskbar. There's our Windows screen. So here's our Windows server out in the cloud. We can do development or hosting or whatever we needed to do. I'm sure Sophia and Alex would be very happy about this. Obviously, again, this would work for other instance types, Linux, Ubuntu, and so on. Now, before you leave, if you are following along, make sure to stop or terminate your instance. We are in the free tier, but there's no sense in leaving things running if you don't need them, because at some point you might get a surprise bill, which is never fun. So let me just close out of this RDP session. I'll just click on the X, but that will not stop your machine. That's just going to disconnect us from the session. To stop or delete your machine, let's come back here to our instances. And with your instance selected here, you'll want to come up to Instance State. Now, there are a few options here. It's important to understand the difference. Stopping the instance will just shut it down, basically. But it's still there, available to boot up in the future, and it still has that hard drive or that EBS volume attached. With this option, you won't be charged for compute, but you will be charged for storage on that hard drive. Terminate will actually blow everything away, so it will delete the instance as well as the hard drive and stop all charges. So this is the one I'm going to choose. We'll need to confirm that. And you'll see that you get this message here, successfully terminated, but it is still showing up in your list, and the instance state here is in shutting down. This will change as it goes through the process. You'll still see the instance in the list for a little while, but eventually it will be totally terminated and gone. All right, that's it for our story of Sophia and Alex and how they're going to solve their problems with their on-premises server. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, give me a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this with other people, and also consider subscribing for future videos. Thank you so much for watching.